shoots. Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. Now, this is off the back of a piece of content that I made a while back, let's say. So it's it's talking about new uh, about UK knife laws. Now, there is a couple of things that I do need to point out, which yes, okay, you know, people pointed out originally when I made the first piece of content. So the UK is made up of X amount of countries, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and of course the, the Kingdom of the Moorlands. Um, English and Welsh law is very similar, Scottish law is again very similar, Northern Irish law is very similar, um, but they are independent laws around certain things. Some of them tend to kind of change maybe certain ages. I know in Scotland if you want to purchase a knife, I think it's 17, whereas here in the UK to purchase a knife you need to be 18. And certain things kind of go back to whether or not you, um, you know, you go against one of these laws and, you know, the, the repercussions on yourself. But fundamentally they're all very, very similar. So if you're gonna go get but hurt about me saying UK knife law, just deal with it. Do you know what? I'll probably say at this point as well, so there's probably people from other countries watching this thinking, oh god, the UK, they've got these stupid laws. Normally at this point I'd say be respectful and, you know, we're all different countries, but I'm at the point where I really do think that this country is run by an absolutely useless shower of whatevers. So feel free, feel free in the comments to put whatever you like, um, because, yeah, so. Um, generally, new UK knife laws, when we're talking about UK um, knife law friendly knives, um, it needs to be three inches or less, which is 7.62 centimeters or 76.2 millimeters. Um, and it needs to be a, um, a non-locking knife. Non-locking knife meaning that it can fold at any given point without having to uh, release some sort of catch um, to be able to uh, to be able to fold it. You know, it's it, it, it's readily foldable. I like to think if you drop it on the floor and it lands on the tip, then there's a very good chance it's going to it's going to close. Um, so they're kind of the exemptions, and, and uh, there's other kind of things around whether or not you can carry a knife in public. Now if it's something that is outside the realms of those kind of things that I just mentioned, you know, three inches, I suppose it would be, it would be longer than three inches. I'm just trying to find the knife that's in my pocket. So here is a cracking example. This is the CRKT Bonafide. Um, so the length of this blade, this is a three and a half inch blade. So straight away in public, I shouldn't be carrying this with good reason. Now that's not to say that this is an illegal knife and I can't own this because I clearly do and I can carry this if I'm not in public. Um, and also this is a locking knife. So again, you know, I can't carry this in public. The onus on the fact that it is in public. If I'm in public and I am caught with this knife, I need uh, a genuine justification as to why I'm carrying it. That could be maybe that I have a sword and I'm going to a theatrical reenactment of something. It could be that I'm taking that to a museum to, you know, to show to the museum mists there. Um, it could be that I have a an 18 inch um, Japanese chef's knife and I work as a 18 inch Japanese chef knife user. Um, they're the kind of reasons that if you do get caught and you know the long knives blah 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 so they're okay. Now one of the main things, let me grab the knives that I used to, well are still legal. So the confusing part is the fact that if you look at the .gov website it specifically says, now that I'm sure, I'm positive, they're driving me nuts on this. The .gov website used to specifically mention cutting edge. So on, actually let me find a better knife to show you this. So on 
a, a knife like the urban like here so the cutting edge goes from the tip down to this point past here this is the ricasso which is an area of the knife that hasn't been sharpened on this specific knife the back of the ricasso and the front of the ricasso here it's used for a thumb and a finger swell so that you can use this because it's still it's still a it's still a slip joint so you can use that to help to keep it safe so there was a point that they took off and they said it's the full length of the knife. The main reason that I'm making this content today is so I was watching some content from Black Belt, Black Belt Barrister, who is a UK barrister that gives information about this sort of thing. And it was something that I know you guys have brought my attention to because it does contradict the previous piece of content that I had and I, th I thought that these changes had come around towards the end of 2001 because I know he did a follow-up piece of content that was at the beginning of 2000 sorry 2021 and it was 2020 when these changes were made um, but this was actually part of a legal case I'm just checking my notes here and it, it was it was Charles Brooker versus the director of public Pros prosecution in 2005 when this was settled to make clear that it isn't just the cutting edge being the section of the knife that is specifically sharpened and not the area that is not sharpened which is the ricasso so even still today and I've just checked which is why for a government that doesn't know its arsehole from its elbow they need to be updating this sort of stuff but if you look at the website, the .gov website, it specifically says cutting edge. Although this case brought it back, it brought, brought it into law in 2005 specifically so that there can't be any argument to say, well, the knife was six inches long, but only two and a half inches of that was actually sharp. Well, that doesn't matter because it also takes into account the full length of the knife, including the area that isn't sharpened. So this one, as I say, so you know, this this is this is the urban. So you've got roughly five millimeters from where the ricasso. I, I probably keep going out of focus there, so apologies. Where the ricasso is here, down to the edge of the scales. Luckily, this is well within three inches, but that five millimeter gap there is still included in the total length of the blade in the eyes of the law. Here is another one. So this is the um, this is the Civivi Stylum. On this one, with it being a very thin, very elegant kind of knife, the ricasso on the end is actually very small, but from here all the way to here there is a very shallow sharpening choil or Spanish notch which would make you assume that the actual length of the knife starts here which is the cutting edge all the way to the tip but as far as the eyes of the law are concerned it goes all the way down here to where the scales start or the knife stops if this was to push in it would stop there and that is the full length of the knife as far as the government is concerned or the legal um, establishment is concerned now luckily in this case it is actually oh, where are we I'm trying to do this so that you can see it but really I need to see it so it's still less it's still less than three inches I think some of the things that you may need to possibly check are some older style knives like these Barlow knives. So these Barlow knives traditionally do have a reasonably long ricasso on here. Same here again, so it comes down, there is a sharpening choil here and then there is probably a good maybe four or five millimeters on the ricasso before it then gets to the bolster. Possibly a bad example, mainly because, you know, this is still within those three inches. But if you're in ever in a situation where I, I, I guess you're trying to legally protect yourself and by saying, well, actually, I know it's 80 millimeters, but 
five of those millimeters are not sharpened so it's a 75 millimeter cutting length it doesn't matter it's still the full length of the knife same again here it goes all the way back to where the bolster is and not where the um, where the sharpened knife meets meets the Rocasso. It's very confusing. It's well, actually, do you know what? I, I think the way that this is, and I, I keep wanting to say I think these new changes, but they're not new changes. These have apparently been around since 2005 for the last 18 years, and the .gov website still doesn't say the full length of the knife. It still says the cutting edge specifically. I actually think I think it makes it easier before where you're like, oh well, you know, it's it's actually not three inches because you've got this. It it does make it a lot easier now. And I know it's not just here in the UK. There are even parts of America, I think California, um, Chicago, I think, have the same where it's 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 three inches or less. A lot of the worldwide kind of manufacturers don't have the, the stupid, oh is it the cutting edge, oh is it, does it include this? So generally a lot of the pocket knives that you get tend to be around that three inches. This is a, a cracking example which is the, uh, the, the new terminus slip joint from SOG where it is pretty much bang on in fact. I mean, if, if it's, it's, it's a hair's width shorter than three inches, it's, I think if you were probably, it's, uh, what is it, 76.2 millimeters, this is probably 76 millimeters, but I, I, I think in some way it makes it easier, you're not having to worry about whether it's blade length, whether it's cutting edge length, does it include the Ricasso, doesn't it include the Ricasso, it makes it a lot easier. But I think if you have any, um, maybe, knives, bespoke knives that have been made specifically for you where someone has looked at the cutting edge and then maybe the, the, uh, the Ricasso has meant that it's slightly longer than that, then you just need to triple check some of those knives. Again, I want to say that these are new laws that have just recently been brought in, but no, um, they've been in since, yeah, since 2005. Now feel free. Uh, normally I say, don't don't bother. Just you know, be be respectful. Feel free. Feel free. Let's hear let's hear in the comments how ridiculous you think these knife laws are. I saw an uh, I saw a video clip the other day of a young man starting a fight in Manchester, and underneath his underneath his jacket he whipped out an 18-inch machete. We've got a government that are worried about three-inch knives that we might possibly try to defend ourselves against some ra really raving psychopath trying to stab at us with, a, with an 18 inch machete. I, I kind of lose faith in the legal system some days that, you know, decent people are being, um, you know, you know what I mean. Anyway, so I just wanted to make it just a little bit clearer Yes, these aren't new laws. They have been around since 2005. It's not clear on the .gov website. What I definitely say is, and I'll also leave a link below. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to tag him in because I don't want to feel as though I'm, I'm trying to build off, off his. I don't know how I can do it so that it, I'm not trying to like piggyback off, off some of his um, Black Belt Barrister's content. But I guess if I leave a link below, you can, you can watch his content without me having to try and piggyback off the back of that. Um, seems like a really nice guy um, putting out a lot of this sort of stuff to, um, to help um, with this sort of stuff here in the UK. This is why I live in the Kingdom of Moorlands, where we don't have to deal with this sort of tomfoolery. Um, so yes, there you go. As you can see, a little bit agitated today, but still feeling good. Um, yeah. So there we go. Um, I'll leave some of my social media links below. I don't. I, I tell you, would you like to see some of the knives that I've shown today? How, how about that? I'll leave some links below so that you can see some of the knives today. I've got some full reviews of the knives that you've seen. Uh, and yes, <laughs> as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander, and stay EDC. <clears throat> I'm gonna put this now.
Brooker. Brooker. Mother Brooker. That's where I'll bloody put it. Mother Brooker. <sighs> Ever have one of those days where you just want things to go right and you get home from work and realise you've left your mouse at work and then everything just goes tits up. It's one of those days. Just, I'll just bloody put it in my pocket, shall I? Where were we? Bloody love you guys, bloody love you guys.